Thank you, Richard. And uh, I, I will not repeat things that have been said uh, because the uh, IMF's WEO, most of us have read it, and it is indeed in a long time the first time that the IMF has become more optimistic than it was in the in the uh, past editions. But I, I want to focus on on really two points. One is this issue of debt and interest rates, and 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 whether that is a major risk. Clearly, the amount of total debt, private and pub public jointly, and of course. I'm talking of gross debt. I mean, there, there's a netting out process, but gross debt to GDP has increased, is, is higher today, significantly higher, depending on the measurements, uh, the, the exact figure, but it's, it's about a third higher than it was at the beginning of the 2008 crisis. This debt is, is carried and is feasible and doesn't create too much of a problem because of extremely low interest rates. So if there was a chance for interest rates, if there was a probability of interest rates rising, the overall debt situation in the world would, would be a problem. However, I, I don't foresee these interest rates to rise for various reasons, both supply side and demand side reasons. Uh, 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 Uri has mentioned the, the low inflation. And so at least in the next few years, I, I don't see that that is a real risk, despite the fact that debt is so high. I'm, you know, it's 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 a hypothesis. If 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 this hypothesis about interest rates is wrong, then uh, we could enter a major crisis situation because debt really is very high. The second point I want to make, and I think that uh, is about the productivity paradox. We we, we just heard. Most of us must have. Heard, uh, been here for the last session about the digital communication news, and you know we, we're entering. We've entered a world, uh, 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 artificial intelligence, a booming technology world. And if you look at what these technology stories at the micro level, you would think, as a macroeconomist, that productivity growth would be rising very rapidly. But in fact, the opposite is the case. Both labor productivity and total factor productivity are rising slowly, much more slowly than they have in a long time. And that is pretty much a global phenomenon. It's, it's true in the US, it's true in Europe, it's true in the major emerging market. So this is a very strange situation. On the one hand, you have this booming technology, innovation, and on the other hand, you have measured productivity uh, in terms of GDP statistics that, that is actually slowing down and, and it is slower than it has been in, in, in the last, uh, you know, for, for, very, for, for decade. The decadal trend has been much, much faster. Now, quickly, two points, and our time is very limited. Is this a measurement problem? Some people will immediately say, this is a measurement problem. Um, there are some measurement issues. But there are important papers that have been written uh, uh, that actually show that measurement only explains a, a very small part of the problem. And of course, we have to remember one thing. Productivity GDP measured in, by, in GDP does not try to measure consumer surplus. I mean, I don't, I don't want to get too technical. Consumer surplus is a different concept from GDP. And it may well be that consumer surplus is rising. But there's also been research on that. And even if you adjust for consumer surplus, again, you don't find that te technology is, is, is rising, uh, the total factor productivity or labor productivity is rising rapidly. So this is a paradox. This is a strange situation, which, you know, which, which, is, a, which is a real puzzle. And we're, we've done some research, which is not finished. But the story that comes out is, is, is very interesting and has to do with something that we wrote together also some years ago, income distribution. What's happening is that the firms, the best firms on the frontier, are actually increasing their productivity quite well. So th there, is, there is rapid 
total factor productivity growth and labor productivity growth among frontier firms, among the best firms. But they are a small minority, and they, they, their weight in the overall economy is small. The other firms, the median firm or the lower below median firms, is showing, in most cases, negative total factor productivity growth. So we, it's not that innovation is not happening and is not translating itself into the productive sphere. It is, but, at the, but only by a minority of high-performing firms. And this has, of course, one that has many implications. One can be hopeful because that the diffusion might occur and you know that, 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 that would solve the problem, although there's data that shows that diffusion is actually slowing down. But it has one very important consequence also. It is making the income distribution even more unequal. It is one more factor of why the income distribution is becoming more unequal. And I think I've run out of time.